this basically differentiates us from every other notification platform out there. For an app to compel you back into their ecosystem, there's no way of doing that. And in the Uber, we used Pegasus to trade a few star chodes for a bad kid. Hey, Joseph. Hello. How are we doing? Good, good, good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. So there's a thing called Swift you're working on. And I heard that you guys tried to do something like create something like Shopify, but on chain, but you might pivot into another direction. So um, yeah, can you maybe tell us about like what's Swift, what's your goal with that? And uh, where, where are you guys heading to? For sure. So originally Swift was ideated as a, an e-commerce platform. As we were building that infrastructure, we came to the realization that we have some really cool infra that's actually somewhat of a better business model than e-commerce. Our core product is actually uh, an encryption service whereby uh, we use public key encryption to just like encrypt data. It's super simple and yet so powerful hmm. because if you have access to users as private data and they're able to share it with all these different parties that are on chain, then we're able to kind of supercharge our current Web3 apps and give them access to data that they never had access to before because we can't put that data on chain. It needs to be encrypted. What kind of stuff would be possible with that, with that approach? A lot of stuff, actually. So right now, the way Swift uses it in terms of the e-commerce contracts is we're able to collect people's names and emails, phone numbers, shipping addresses, and share that information with the sellers. And it's completely end-to-end -end encrypted, which means that only you, the user, and the person that you've authorized can access the data. So Swift can't access it, third parties can't access it. And even if dat the databases behind this get hacked, all hackers will have access to is a bunch of random strings of characters, nothing, right? Because it's completely encrypted. Why is that needed? Why, why is encryption needed? Well, this encryption service is cool and all, but The real reason we have it is so that we can power our second service, which is Notify. This basically differentiates us from every other notification platform out there is that your email is actually completely encrypted. So you can authorize a multitude of apps, like every app in Cosmos, you can authorize all of them to send you notifications, but none of them will actually know your email. Instead of distributing your email to all these different applications, protocols, and potential uh, points of failure, if one of them gets hacked, then your email gets becomes available. It becomes a bit of an issue. So we propose a different solution. Trust Swift with your email, and then Swift will send notifications to you on behalf of these apps. Instead of having to trust all of these applications, there's only one point of failure. And um, so that would also enable projects to be completely decentralized, but still able to collect email addresses and send out notifications? Exactly. And it also absolves them of having to respect certain privacy rules like GDPR, mm -hmm. because they never actually see the emails. So these apps can tie notifications to on-chain events or completely arbitrary moments, right? They can send weekly email newsletters, they can send you push notification reminders, marketing campaigns, and users can deauthorize them at any time. But isn't there already, isn't it like a solved problem? I mean, there are notification services. To me, it feels like maybe not for Cosmos, but for other chains that seems to be already solved. Or do you guys have a different approach? Yeah. So a key difference between Swift Notify and a lot of these other apps is that we're able to offer this to applications purely based on on-chain data. So you can notify users based on their address, things like their Neutron address, their Juno address, whatever you're Your, your app is built on, you can notify them using their address. So you can call our API and you can say, I want to notify this Neutron address and I want to send them an email notification and here's the HTML for my email and maybe I want to schedule it. Maybe I want to add some extra parameters, set a specific email for it to be sent from. All of that is available to apps. So they have very fine grain control on the content and the context of their notifications. And they're able to do it without knowing users' emails, without storing users' emails in a way that's insecure, like a plain text database or more of a Web2 solution. Because it's end-to-end -end encrypted in this way, there really is only one possible point of failure for the notification system, and it's Swift itself. But you, initially you developed that for Swift itself, for the shop service, right? Yeah. So how, what was the idea behind that? What was the need? So the need was to notify users 
of their packages arriving or their orders being shipped, order confirmations, receipts, pretty much any action that you would have with a Swift store would result in an email or an SMS. This was needed because it's something that other e-commerce platforms do. Whenever you order something from a store, you expect to get a receipt, right? You expect to get a shipping confirmation once the merchant ships it. And this is something, this was a very big challenge that we had because we're built on blockchain, we're not able to collect email addresses as easily as these other platforms. And so this is the solution we came up with. Is there any Cosmos app you're using on a daily basis you wish to have like like services like you guys offer? Like, is there anything where they think like, oh, I really want to know when a new Osmosis pool comes up or something like that? Of course. I mean, Osmosis is a big target, I would say. To my knowledge, they're currently working with another service that actually does this in a way that's not end-to-end -end encrypted. I'm not 100% sure here, so don't take my word for it. But based on what I've seen, it looks like it's very expensive and that it does not cover every single point that Swift Notify does. I think we'll see how, how it pans out for Osmosis. If anything, any other apps that I really enjoy using, Interchain Info, their resources are great. If I could get, you know, weekly newsletters, that would be awesome. I would also enjoy maybe some staking reminders from Kepler, mm -hmm. something like how many rewards I've earned today. So maybe every day at like 6 p.m. I could get a, a push notification on my phone that tells me that I've earned $10 in staking rewards today and maybe a reminder to claim them or notifications that let me know that certain validators are going down or that I've been slashed, all of this other stuff, very high priority things could be sent by push or SMS, email. And we're working on some other stuff too. Desktop notifications are coming and all these other things. So it's going to be very exciting. How would that play together with the Swift Guard? So, I mean, Swift Guard is your encryption service, right? Exactly. So you use that to encrypt email addresses, but are there any other use cases for that, like for enterprise customers or something like that? Absolutely. I mean, one use case we thought about was KYC. So you could gather KYC information without endangering the safety of your users. This is especially a large challenge for Web3 apps because collecting customer data is very difficult. And our aim with SwiftGuard is to make this really easy. So let's say like projects would work with all those tools you offer. So you have that one product that encrypts stuff, the other that utilizes the same thing to push out notifications. Yeah. W would you connect it with anything else or would there be like a, a bigger picture? for? I think it's extremely extensible. Notify is just the beginning. What's your vision there? Our vision is that Swift Guard might be the new way that we collect data on the blockchain. What is, do you think is possible that's not possible in Web3 right now or, or in Cosmos? We're talking with Abstract right now to do enterprise invoicing using SwiftGuard. So you'd be able to collect KYC data for your customers using SwiftGuard, as well as billing information like their address and point of contact, and then automatically generate invoices and accept payments through Abstract's payment module. Okay. Let's say in, in, in five years, like everybody uses Swift and its technology, what would be different? How would it feel different? It's going to be very interesting to see over the next five years how apps and protocols are going to interface directly with their users using our notifications. I think one integral flaw of Web3 right now is that for an app to compel you back into their ecosystem, there's no way of doing that. So Web2 apps like Uber, they use notifications almost every day. They bombard you, actually, to get you back onto the app. Social media does this. It creates this kind of fear of missing out that drives people to use the service and spend more money and generate more fee revenue. I think that in five years, the impact of our notifications, at least, is definitely going to be on revenue. A lot of apps are going to be able to get their users back on very quickly and compel them to, you know, make more transactions and generate more fees. And also, like, building habits in the end, right? Yes, habit building is a huge thing. So if you get your users to build a habit to open the app first thing in the morning, like a lot of people will wake up and before they even make their bed or even get out of bed, they're already on Twitter, right? And that's a habit forming system where you wake up and you see all these Twitter notifications and you don't want to miss out, right? And this is going to allow Web3 apps to create that same feeling. And did you guys ever think about collecting all those notifications in a central place? For example, you have like five projects that use your technology, your, your push notification technology, and that you maybe have a hub where those get collected? The hub is our users' inboxes and phones, notification centers, and I think there's already kind of a hub. 
right? Because your phone is where you get most of your notifications. So it's more of a physical hub than anything. And do you have plans to also optimize that? Maybe, for example, somewhere I read that Slack has a very complex approach to when to send you a notification even to your phone, because when you're on your desktop, then maybe it doesn't send you a push notification on your phone and all that stuff. Um, do you guys have also plans to put some like sophisticated algorithm yeah. on stuff like this? We do have a very in-progress system that we're calling in-app notifications. The idea is if you're on the app, we will serve you a notification inside of the app and apps will be able to leverage our API to make this really simple. It's like a WebSocket thing. It's your app will connect to the WebSocket and there's a live connection. And whenever a notification happens, and this only works for obviously SMS and push because they're immediate notifications. Well, email notifications are the kind of thing that you read later, right? For SMS and push notifications, whenever those get fired, if this in-app API is enabled, instead of sending them to your phone, they'll get displayed directly in your browser on your desktop. Okay. And what about iOS apps, Android apps? So let's say in-app notifications actually also work for iOS or Android apps because it's just an API, right? It's a WebSocket connection and any app can do that. Although they will have to figure out a way to display them, but I'm sure there's some very talented developers out there who will figure it out. But let's say let's say Kepler wants to implement that into their app or other wallets, let's say, that are really on, on the phone. Is that possible to do with your API? Absolutely. Okay. And what kind of stuff can be pushed? So Apple has a push notification API that kind of outlines all of the things you can put in a push notification. And it's actually very large. You can put photos, videos, even external content in your notifications. You can customize the logo, the font. Well, not really the font, but if it's bold or not, that type of stuff. But you can, there's really a huge amount of customization. I'm not too familiar with how notifications work on Android, but knowing the platform, I'm sure they're even more extensible than on iOS. I mean, since you're now working more on that notification thing, since you realized a lot of projects are in need of that, And maybe now is not the market for selling stuff on chain, right? Just not right now. Let's give it maybe two or three years. Let's wait for kind of a turn in the market. People are going to be more excited about crypto and they're going to want to use it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, when we'll be ready to strike with a great e-commerce offering. For now, we're pivoting our company, focusing on infrastructure first, because we think it may be a better business model. But you already built that that basic platform for the e-commerce stuff. Yeah, right? we have an e-commerce MVP. Okay, um, so if projects would be really in need of some e-commerce solutions, you could offer that or? Yeah, we can help. We're actually retooling it a bit where we're doing NFT gated e-commerce stuff and we're going to do a few collections on Stargaze soon that really wanted to do merch with like print on demand and stuff. But once those are launched, we're going to completely focus on, on infra. Okay. Yeah, what about your other projects? I mean, one I remember is uh, Pegasus. Right. That was that was fun. So it's a little something I built with with my good friend Mauritz. It's a peer to peer NFT trading platform that we built over the course of like a week or two. It's down right now because I need to change my billing settings on Vercel. Uh, it's on the wrong card. So once I get the website back up, it's going to be operational. But I haven't really maintained it in a while just because I don't have time. It's pretty cool though. So we use this in Medellin, and this is actually how I got my bad kid is just outside of the Intercontinental Hotel, right before the, the Bad Kids Hangout party. Maritz and I both didn't have any Bad Kids. So we met this like Bad Kids whale and we looked at his wallet and he has like over 100 Bad Kids of all sorts. So we shared an Uber with him to get to the place. And in the Uber, we used Pegasus to trade a few star shows for a Bad Kid. And that's how I got mine. But you will bring it back up, right? Like, will it, will it ever be live again? <laughs> yes, it will be live again. We are actually talking to Kepler Wallet about something, but I just can't have too much involvement in it right now just because I don't have much time. How does Pegasus work? So you can trade NFTs, right? Yeah. Basically, instead of the contract holding NFTs and then doing the trade, it collects authorizations that allow it to transfer the NFT on your behalf. So whenever you send an offer to someone, if they accept it, it'll check if it's still authorized on all the NFTs. And if it's still authorized and the NFTs are still in the accounts that they're supposed to be in, it'll just send them over to each side in the same block. So it's completely impossible to scam people on there. And it was you created that before there was the Stargaze marketplace, right? No, it was, I think, a couple months after the Stargaze marketplace launched. Okay, but it's a different approach. So it's like you offer one or two or like a specific bag of NFTs and request other NFTs, right? Yeah. And you accept that and then I request some, let's say a bed kit in your collection and I offer you another bed kit in exchange for that and you accept or both accept and then... Well, once you send an offer, you've basically already accepted it. 
And then it's just, once you've sent the offer, if I accept it, then we're good to go. And then if I reject it, then, you know, it's rejected. And this could also be a cool use case for Swift notifications, where if you sign up, you can get a notification every time someone makes an offer to you or following has a new NFT or whatever. I, I discovered it a couple of times on Twitter that people, and also myself, that if, especially if you have a bad kid, you get like every week you get offers for your bad kid, right? But you never notice it because there's no way to know. Like if you don't use Stargaze like daily or weekly, there's no way to find out that you get notified. And then another thing you're, you're working on is also together with us on the front end for um, mesh security, right? Yes. And of course, my front end understanding is a bit limited. So what was the, or what still is the challenge with mesh security from, from your front end? Of your course. Point? So I would say the largest challenge we've had while developing mesh security is conveying to the user how much they have across chains and how much they have staked locally and how to entice them to get those locally staked tokens into the mesh. So one solution that we came up with and that was part of your designs as well was to show them how much they have cross-staked across the mesh and then how much they have staked locally on single chains as well as how much they have liquid. And then we show them that same graph for every single chain so that they can see that if, for example, on a cash, a majority of their tokens are staked locally, they can take those locally staked tokens and cross-stake them to Osmosis or to, to Juno. And is there any technological challenge when it comes to, to building a front-end like that? Like the calling all the, the APIs or something? There's always a challenge when building front-ends that support, like, what, five, six chains, and eventually this will be like 20 chains. So we need to ask users authorizations for every single one of those chains. One good tool that we have on our side is Cosmosgate from Cosmology. Amazing tool. It allows us to manage wallets for multiple chains using this thing called the Wallet Repository. And it's actually quite cool. Okay, so, I mean, also, since we're talking about Mesh, there's also a lot of potential for notifications right now. Like, I guess for, it sends you daily or weekly summaries of how many tokens you, you've earned and you can claim, basically, or the dollar amount. Of I think there are a few categories of notifications we can do on Mesh. I think we should categorize them as immediate notifications and for later notifications. So immediate notifications would be sent by SMS or push. Things like, your validator on this chain got jailed or they're going down, or they got slashed. That's immediate. You need to know that immediately. And then you might want to know also immediately how much money you've earned. So some people might opt in for immediate notifications, push notifications daily, weekly, monthly of how much money they've earned and a call to action to claim that money. While some might want to, you know, sit back, relax and enjoy the mesh and they'll want to get those notifications by email. And we can customize that based on user preference being added to the mesh. That's cool for email notifications. We could also think about New validators. That's a cool email notification use case. I think there are a lot of things we can do for Mesh that would be good in terms of notifications, but it would be awesome to have it in V2. I think that also, um, now that I think about it, I think that's one thing that also could revolutionize in a sense, not revolutionize, but push forward governance a lot, right? Because right now we use Twitter for everything social to, to align on stuff, but I have the feeling still like there could be not everything on chain, but there could be also some stuff. You could get some notifications on topics that... Yeah, governance roundups, stuff like that could be very cool. I think this also ties into Interchain Info newsletters, which would be really sick. What does that mean? So Interchain Info, yeah. the app, I'm sure you know, they just pushed through a, a complete revamp of mm -hmm. the site and it's awesome. So, so what you can, can you do there? You can filter through like all these Cosmos chains, projects, apps. There's resources, articles that kind of sum up some larger crypto subjects into very small bite-sized reads. And those articles and new projects that are added and relevant searches, stuff you're following, all of that could be, you know, given to you in one clean little email. Yeah. But generated or, or more like a... A mix of both. Okay. So the idea is, as far as I understand it, it's like Tenement Timmy's project, right? Yeah. And so over there, he's collecting, or the project is collecting data of like each chain and project on those chains. It's actually a bit closer to Wikipedia. You can edit any article, and then if it gets approved, your edits are on the site. But that's not on chain, right? It's off chain. Okay. But is that then still relevant to, to your notification um, product? Because, I mean, you're more like focused on, on chain stuff. 
there's two focuses, right? Obviously, there's on-chain event. So whenever I get a, I get money transferred to my wallet or stuff like that, I want to be notified. But we can also do like custom. So you can send notifications whenever you want, which means you can do weekly newsletters, stuff like that. You can tie it to a cron job every seven days on Sunday morning, 6 a.m. You get a cool little email that rounds up all of the articles for this week and the topics you're interested in and that type of stuff. For my security, this could be how much money you made and some validator news on each chain, maybe, like who's what the validator rankings look like and stuff like that. News about your specific validator squad so you can keep up to date with the validators that you're staking with. Stuff like that. Cool. I'm mostly out of questions. Is there any, any other th stuff you, you would love to talk about? Any, anything you're working on? No. Uh, that's, it's already like a pretty busy schedule on top of my work at Stride. So it's, I can say that I work at Stride. That's fine. But I can't say what I'm working on. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, like, thank you for, for the updates. We should definitely talk when you guys have more, made more progress and more like onboarded a couple of projects. Just let me know. Whenever I have an update, I'll just come to Germany. Yeah. Just fly over. Just fly over to the office. Awesome. Thank you. And until next time. Until next time. Bye.